Sun's going down, prime time's coming up. All right, here we go, listen to this one. I'm so thankful for YouTube videos. I was hearing about the Bigfoot stories back in the 60s, and my views on them was the same as my views on the existence of ghosts. I had an open mind because although I had not experienced any encounters of them, I would not discount the possibility. I had an encounter with a ghost first in 71, and then I had my only encounter with a Florida Bigfoot. They were called skunk capes. But the one I walked up on had no smell at all. I was tracking something very big that walked out of a small pond but left no signs where it entered. I followed these tracks that were so far apart that at six foot one inch I could only reach the distance between them, but I couldn't find balance to walk. I knew what these tracks were not, but I was not sure if they were indeed a Bigfoot. I had to find out. I followed the tracks for a little over a quarter of a mile. I didn't think about what I would do if I did find something. I followed into a thick palmetto and pine tree grove. I could sense that something was very close and the hair on the back of my neck was tingling. I stopped to look around before going any further when I saw the eyes. They were eight, maybe nine inches apart, and I was looking deep into them. I could sense it was not going to harm me, but I realized this thing was but I realized I was carrying my twenty two rifle and I knew I didn't have enough firepower to stop this thing, and if I did shoot it, I would only piss it off. Eight to nine inches apart. Just so you guys know, the distance between the eyeballs of a very, very large grizzly bear is only about four and a half to four and three quarter inches apart. Five would be huge, huge, huge grizzly bear. Just so you know. I started to back away and then run like hell. I didn't tell anyone about it, not even my brother, who was waiting back in my car because he didn't want to follow me. I became very interested in the subject of Bigfoot encounters. I tried to make sense of what had happened. I could not be sure of how long I was looking into those eyes. I'd never been able to get them out of my mind still to this day. I just watched the video of the boy that was picked up by the Sasquatch after picking up a turtle. I've been troubling over the years about how long I was just standing there looking into those eyes. I've looked into all kinds of Bigfoot stories and I've pondered all the experiences and conversations. I have formed my own beliefs about these beings and I'm glad that your sharing all of the stories sent to you has helped me deal with my own experience and come to realize how these beings are far superior in many, in many ways. I'm sure that they only left certain people I am sure they only let certain people see them and that they are so in touch with their environment that they know what is walking in their area. Their sixth sense is so far beyond our comprehension, it's insane. Once again, thank you, Steve, for sharing. You've helped in so many ways. I still have those eyes etched into my mind, but now I understand why. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. I can see, I didn't see eyeballs looking at me when that one was just looking at me like this. But I can still see that form like it happened two seconds ago. And I was 17 or 18 when that went down. But it's funny how those high impact experiences in life stay etched in your brain like a freaking tattoo, isn't it? Vivid. Everybody's most unsettling experience in life is always vivid in their mind for the rest of their life. Here's another one. It was late in the day. We had driven down the east side of the mountains from Washington. And we're a little campground atop a two-lane blacktop pass. And we're at a little campground at the top of a two-lane blacktop pass above Eugene, Oregon. Summer, around 2003. Next day, we we're going down an Oregon County Fair. Not really our thing, but we thought we'd see what it was all about. We had made camp, and we decided to drive around a little bit to see the surroundings. Then head back to go to bed early. 
We were going about 30 on a gentle downgrade when I saw something black come into my field of vision. I thought, bear. And this animal came hurtling towards us. It was on a long diagonal that would cross the road in front of our truck. The thing was, it was going so fast. I'd never seen anything move like that. This was happening too fast for my mind to try to decide what I was seeing. You couldn't say it was on all fours, and it also seemed to be using its arms. I can remember the impression, Big Monkey, flashed through my head. What goes as fast as that? It crossed in front of us just a few feet from the truck. I don't think I even applied the brakes. The strangest part was it was making a wild whooping sound. I can remember thinking, do bears do that? It wasn't a growling or yowling, but almost like a Flintstones yabba dabba do. It was a crazy and loud, happy, whooping jabber. I can't really describe it. We had barely slowed down. This took a few seconds. It disappeared into the trees behind us, the sound dying out. What was that, my wife said. It was like she was unable to put it together in her head. I think I said a bear, but that sounded crazy. I think I said a bear, but that crazy sound. We turned around and headed back to camp. Neither of us feeling anything except a sense that we had not been able to make any kind of complete observation. It happened too fast and was too much out of what one might have expected. The several times I've seen bears, they've always been ambling nonchalantly along. I remember thinking the sound was the thing that seemed the most incongruous. We didn't experience any of the truly disturbing stuff that happens to a lot of stories on your channel. And although we told the story to a few people, like we saw a bear or something, cross the road in front of us up on the pass. It was really moving, but it was like just a dumb story. Not something that contained its true weirdness. The listener would just say, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> my full name is in my email, but use my first name only. Small community here, H. The speed. I've had a, uh, I know a couple people. I know a couple of people who, uh, who seen these things and they, that really stood out to me when they both said it was the speed the speed of it, the unnatural speed that really scared the shit out of them. They couldn't believe how fast the thing moved. That's kind of bizarre, isn't it? I mean, all, all the animals, all the upright beings, all the four-legged animals that we know of, um, there isn't one that scares any of us because of how fast it moves, <laughs> right? There just isn't. I mean, I've seen some grizzly bears. I've been riding on my horse up a noisy creek in the northern Rockies of British Columbia, riding up, leading the way, and uh, with, the, with the thermals coming straight down on the wind in the face, and all of a sudden bust out to a little clearing, and there's a grizzly right there. I'll never forget, that. this reminds me of that story, and I'll never forget it, that bear. I used to have a 12-gauge shotgun, short one, and I'd have my scabbard straight up and down beside my left knee, because I shoot left-handed, although I'm right-handed. And uh, I will never forget how fast that thing moved. It went, it roared, it jumped away, because I scared the shit out of it. It jumped away, went boom, boom, boom. It took three jumps away from me roaring, and then spun around, put his ears back, and took one big back, one leap back towards me. And in the time it went jump, 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 I went like this. <laughs> got my hand on the stock of my shotgun, and that's all I got. I'll never forget how fast that was, and that was when I realized as well that same day, when I realized that if a grizzly bear wants your ass, it's going to take it. But anyway, but getting back to the point of that, your story and the point of that speed. Um, yeah, the speed, the speed factor is, is very, very intimidating to those who get to witness it. That's something else. You know, I would like to see, uh, I'd, I'd like to see that speed. I'd like to see that example. You know, like there's another friend of mine has a helicopter here in Whistler. And uh, another friend of his, actually I've been in contact with this guy. I was going to get a hold of him and get together with him, but the story of my life, it's just no time. I, can, I can't even reply to a freaking phone call anymore or a text. I, I, it's t I'm just so busy. But getting off track. But uh, this guy, friend of mine, he came fish. He, came, he flew out to Banfield, the West Coast Island, his helicopter. And came fishing with us for the day, and this topic came up. And he just said, oh, yeah, I got a friend of mine, and he's in the head of the Sioux Valley. 
you can Google that if you want, head of the Sioux Valley, S-O-O, -O, between Pemberton and Whistler. And there's a lot of activity up there. And uh, he saw this large gray Sasquatch ripping straight uphill in a clear cut, jumping over logs like nothing, sprinting upright, running up that hill. Who does that? Who does that? But man, would that be, would that just be something else to see that power? To see that power and that agility and that speed, that unnatural power, that unnatural speed on an unknown wild person. That would be something else, wouldn't it not? 